What is up, people? We are here with the crew. What's well, happening, everyone? Welcome to the video. Christian Guzman and oh, Rob Lipset. Sit back, relax, enjoy it. Oh, baby, it is very nippy this morning. But yes, Rob Lipset and Christian Guzman, literally two of the biggest fitness YouTubers on YouTube, and I definitely am a fan of both, okay? But Christian in particular, of course, being known for his summer shredding series, where he literally shreds down every single year and gets an insane shape. So I thought, why not make that the topic of this video and literally guide you through like a step-by-step evidence-based diet setup to hopefully allow you to get as shredded as Mr. Guzman. So again, this is gonna be like a vlog of a few days with the topic inside it. So if you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And of course, appreciate the transition through the forehead already to the motherland, 5k steps. Oh my god, that is so much nicer, guys. Look at my nose, it's literally red. Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer, checking him. Of course, we are low on a few items, so we pick up our box. We need some pasta, so some whole wheat fusilli. Pop that in there. One or two of the Cajun chicken breasts. Some rice cakes, we're going for a salted one, not the unsalted, a bit of salt. Some frozen berries, so normally I prefer the strawberries. How can we not forget some spinach? And of course, a potato, and oh my god, look at the size of these. These are literally getting bigger. Like, look at the comparison to a human. <laughs> anyway, we'll get like two of those. And another one. And actually, we'll go for some poverty Milky Way bars while we're at it. And there we go, that is the morning pickup. No doubt I will be back later on this evening. 12 euro 65. But oh my god, what a beautiful morning. It really is. And you've probably copped on, yes, I am still fasted, okay? I follow intermittent fasting. Okay, so if there's anything you take from this video is not to actually eat like me, because fasting isn't exactly optimal for fat loss, but to take the information of this video and implement it into your lifestyle. The magic juice has been made. BCA is citrulline malate. Bet Alan needs some sea salt, some sugar-free squash, and oh my days, this stuff works. You guys have been saying that you have actually been trying it, and it is magic. Link will be down below. Go tap that shit and support your boy. Just play a game. Boop, 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 boop. Tap it. You don't even have to buy anything. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> but yes, on the topic of intermittent fasting, that technically is like a diet type. So let's break this whole video down into like big chunks, okay? Starting with the fundamentals, diet type. What is the best diet type for fat loss? Look, all of the research will be on the screen and linked down below. But overall, the research says that a wide variety of dietary approaches, low fat, low carb, keto, intermittent fasting, have all been shown to be similarly effective for losing fat once a calorie deficit is created, okay? Meaning that diets focused on fat loss don't operate under diet type, but operate under the fundamental mechanism of a sustained calorie deficit, okay? And even if there are like some studies out there showing marginal differences or benefits of different types of diets, a recent study and meta-analysis by Johnson et al. 2014 of like 59 studies still conclude that the weight loss differences reported between individual named diets are so small with likely little importance to those seeking weight loss, thus supporting the practice of recommending any diet that a patient will just be able to adhere to. Which for me is intermittent fasting, okay? But regardless of what diet type you choose, of course, there are some key factors you still need to consider in order to like optimize it for fat loss. But nonetheless, I have spoken too much. We're about to smash our chest in three, two, one. Boom, not the best session, but we still got it done to be honest. And you see those Stairmasters over there, they are calling my name. Here we go, 20 minutes as per usual. We start realistically, whoever enjoys their workout on this. But here we go, 20 minutes. Boom, there we go, 20, 20, bish bash bosh. Finito. Mo Farah, I am coming for you. I'm telling you, I am built for endurance. Two hoodies and I'm not even that warm. As always, done stores bag for the win. Go click the link down below. But yes, let's again just appreciate what a crisp, crisp afternoon it is in the home of the potato. Dinky winky, dinky winky, dipsy. Now, let's get to the first factor calories okay back to the topic of the video we know that we need to create a calorie deficit but this is not always going to be the same depending on the individual for example the fatter you are the bigger your deficit can be Correct, so if you are super, super fat, don't be afraid of being more aggressive in your calorie deficit, okay? And this is confirmed in the literature by Knacker et al, 2013. If you're Irish, you'll know why that's funny. Who showed that losing weight at a fast initial rate leads to greater short-term weight reductions without increased susceptibility to weight regain in obese individuals, okay? So technically, you can be super, super aggressive if you're fat, okay? But for the majority of you who are lean, this is completely different, okay? So for example, well, actually, this is still a vlog, so here we go. Post-workout meal convenience is key. We have some eggs, a medley of vegetables, then we have some bulk powders, whey, some cocoa powder, and some oats. So you know what this means? It means we have an anabolic omelet of peace frying in the pan. We have some thick-ass oats in the microwave. 
I'm bish, bosh, bosh. There we go. Literally like a seven minute meal. Those who say they don't have time to cook are just being lazy. But yes, quickly back to the example why lean people need to take it just that little, just a little bit slower when losing fat, okay? As per Garth et al. 2011, who actually showed a weekly reduction of 0.7% of body weight to result in overall more body fat loss and less muscle loss than adopting a faster rate of double the speed, so 1.4% loss per week, okay? And this is also supported by Helms et al. who actually suggest similar body weight loss losses of like 0.5 to 1% losses per week to maximize muscle retention. So overall, I would say if you are lean, I would stick between a 250 to a 500 calorie deficit at the most, or just a deficit that assuming you're tracking your weight, which I hope you are, has you losing roughly within that 0.5 to 1% body weight per week. So yeah, gonna smash this down and get catching up on a bit of work. And before we get to the next factor, do you remember these, the expired Halo Top vouchers? Well, whoa! If at first you don't succeed, try and try again. <laughs> just for the crack, we might as well see if test are smart enough to notice and they're not on offer 5.99 but really at this stage who cares so yeah they do have like these new flavors here i haven't tried the triple chocolate one or the monster cookie but they're like way higher calories pretty much like double the amount of those tubs but yes you see that high protein that is sort of the next factor is that regardless of what diet type you choose you keep protein nice and high okay because when it comes to the science high protein intakes repeatedly outperform low to moderate ones for preserving lean body mass and reducing fat mass but you're probably asking how much scott well, Phillips and Van Loon actually state elevated protein consumptions as high as 1.8 to 2 grams per kilo, depending on the calorie deficit, may be advantageous for preserving lean body mass under periods of calorie restriction. However, realistically, bodybuilders like during fat loss phases are doing like insane amounts of volume on top of like cardio being in a deficit. Okay, so there are other studies by Mettler et al. 2010 who have shown higher intakes of 2.3 grams per kilo to be superior for lean mass retention, with Matsu et al. 2010 showing even higher at 2. 6 grams per kilo and Eric Helms 2013 even higher yet again giving a range of 2.3 to 3.1 grams per kilo of body weight and that's personally what I would recommend myself but anyway that is factor two bang out the way Ch -ch -ch. <laughs> and we are in the cereal aisle because my thought process is if I only go up with the vouchers it might look a little bit sketchy but if I include it with something it might look more like a shop and they might not notice but here we go I was gonna go for white chocolate ones but at 445 definitely not but these have definitely caught my eyes reduced to clear the marshmallow mateys for two euros so we'll pick up a box of those and then you can never go wrong with stocking up on some squash so we'll go for some cherries and berries and then for the next meal I think I'm gonna switch it up so we'll go for some Irish baby potatoes and then halo top flavor wise hopefully we'll get them I'll go for a birthday cake one birthday cake and then these two salted caramel so the next question is will we get them and the best way to find out is of course how we do best through a transition through the forehead but firstly we fill up the petrol because this is what ordinary people do <laughs> so here we go can we get a bang on oh no, oh, 27, 27, that's good. Comment down below, do you do the same? But for now, I'd say the suspense is absolutely crippling you. Did we get the ice cream? <laughs> oh, Jesus. You know what, guys? It turns out Tesco's are actually quite smart because they copped on to me. Of course, it didn't work. <laughs> it was worth a try, though. But I can't complain. We did come out with the cheap-ass mateys, the sugar-free squash, and, of course, the potatoes, which are boiling up and actually going to be part of this next meal. Again, I'm trying to switch it up here. These are, like, practically mini cooking shows. But we have some hake fillets, very, very lean source of protein, and then we seasoned it with some of this touch of Italy sort of spice, and then some mixed herbs, some cayenne pepper, a little bit of lemon on there. So the plan is that we're just gonna put that on like that. Ah! Pop it inside the microwave. But first, these take a lot longer, so we're gonna let those steam up. The hake is in the microwave, ready to go. And you know the deal. Bish, bash, bosh. Master chef, come at me, bro. But literally, like three quarters of the packet of the potatoes, a nice little salad of spinach for some micros. And then we have this. This looks very good, guys. But yes, for the potatoes, we added some whiskey. I'm gonna get drunk on this whiskey barbecue sauce. Just one serving. Absolute. Perfection. But quickly to sum up protein, yes, I would say roughly 2.5 grams. If you want more, you can, okay? Another benefit of having more protein, even if it might not be necessary, is that it'll actually keep you full on a diet, okay? As per Pesta and Samuels 2014, they say that protein is by far the most satiating macro followed by carbs and fat, okay? With Weigel et al. 2005 even confirming this with a high protein diet shown to actually induce sustained reductions in appetite, okay? Furthermore, as Corvette, whatever, I'm gonna 
butcher that, et al, 1998, have shown protein is the most thermogenic of the three macros, meaning that you're just gonna burn more off if it's not going towards repair or energy, which for a fat loss phase is just like another huge bonus, okay? And a lot of studies do actually speculate and point to this as being the main factor behind high protein diets being so effective for reducing fat. So before it gets cold, gonna smash that down, get doing a bit of work, but you know we cannot have a meal without dessert, so this is what we're gonna fit in. It's no meter long baguette and it's a fairly measly sized serving of Nutella, but we did still fit it in. It was either this or peanut butter, so four rice cakes, two with jam, two with Nutella, you already know you cannot have a meal like that without something sweet afterwards. Perfect! Casper the ghost, check in in. <laughs> so we banged out protein, now let's get to the next factor. You're probably asking how many grams of carbs and fat should you be having? Honestly, especially when in a deficit, it really doesn't matter, okay? And this is strongly confirmed in a very recent one year long, so like a 12 month study by Gardner et al 2018 of like 600 participants who showed that given protein is equated, there is no significant difference in weight change between a healthy low fat diet and a healthy low carb diet, okay? So literally, again, it all goes back to just calories and protein and even coaching wise I can confirm I have clients just hitting calories and protein and they pretty much achieve the same results as those like dialing in every single macro so yeah just pick which one you prefer obviously there are gonna be minor differences which I will discuss later but overall it still comes down to adherence boom turns out it's not quite the crisp day after all but still we're banging out the steps in the rain because we're not snowflaked and I already know you're asking me Scott I need numbers how much fat how many grams of carbs? But first, let me get out of the rain. To my second home, Little's Bakery, of course. But yeah, it really is as simple as assigning fat first, okay? Fat is an essential macronutrient, so you wanna do that first before doing carbs. And overall, I would still recommend a fairly low fat intake, as per Lambert et al 2004, who actually did a study on competitive bodybuilders and recommend overall like 15 to 20% of energy intake, okay? That's pretty much what I'm at and what I would recommend. And speaking of fat, I told you to be back. This is what we're gonna pick up for dinner. So 12% fat beef mince. There's an 18%, which is a little too high and then there is this super lean five percent but your boy has saved fat for this meal so 12 percent is good and it's cheaper too so should we do a little adventures why not let's just do a super quick little adventures here we go first on the list is going to be some tinsel very festive a demolition hammer a shower rinse set some ski goggles a kitchen machine perfect for protein fluff an elf Again, very festive. An energy saving pot. A drain cleaner. Some stylish winter boots. And how can you not forget the chocolate fondue set? Of course. As always, if you want these to continue, smash the like button. But for now, here we go. Just wrong, 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 Scott. Fats are needed for anabolic hormone concentrations. Without them, you're just gonna lose all your lean body mass. Look, I already know. You're asking, and yes, there is a plethora of evidence out there to suggest that low-fat diets do actually result in decreases in anabolic hormone concentrations, but decreases in these don't necessarily mean a reduction in lean body mass. As per another Helms review in 2014, one years later, who said that in direct studies of resistance-trained athletes undergoing calorically restricted high-protein diets, low-fat interventions that maintained carbohydrate levels appear to be more effective at preventing lean body mass losses as opposed to lower carbohydrate higher fat approaches okay you know what these results indicate oh my days flash from the past but yes these results indicate that trying to maintain gym performance with a higher carbohydrate intake might actually be better for preserving lean body mass than actually trying to maintain anabolic hormone concentrations with a higher fat diet so yeah get to the gym train like a beast eat your carbohydrates but now back to the meal which if you were smart you would have probably been able to guess but we have all of the beef cooking up in some tomatoes some onion and then we're gonna have all of well pretty much all of the packet of the fusilli we'll add some bolognese sauce we'll probably go for half of the mince and then save the other half for like the leftover potatoes maybe for tomorrow so you know the deal bish bash bosh fusilli al bolognese finito as always if you too want to eat out of bowls the size of your head click the first link down below but familia italiana come sempre questo è per voi dobbiamo assaggiare il cibo della terra italiana mm. Porca miseria, questo è fantastico. The sun will come out tomorrow. 
<laughs> anyway, it is the next morning. We are banging out the steps. The macro capper will be coming on the screen shortly, but yeah, we've touched on calories and macros. So now let's move down this pyramid and touch on the smaller details of your diet, okay? So meal frequency and meal timing. Starting with meal frequency. Look, the amount of meals per day isn't gonna actually influence how much body weight you lose, but it might actually impact how much lean mass you preserve. You know, to preserve your gains, you want to be able to maximize muscle protein synthesis and fasting definitely does not allow you to do so. Therefore, as per a recent study in 2018 by Schoenfeld et al, of course, on protein distribution, they conclude that to maximize anabolism, one should consume protein at a target intake of 0.4 grams per kilogram per meal across a minimum of four meals. So it's pretty easy, guys, once you've calculated how many calories, protein, carbs, and fat you need, just split those over four meals per day. Easy. Guess who's back? back again oh my god guys if you could smell this bakery look they're stocking it up with some fresh goods and it smells mighty fine but anyway we're picking up some bagels while also getting home just in time to prep up a juicy oat cake from the recipe book down below yes baby so we're gonna let this set and then for now we are gonna try to bang out our legs and I am absolutely scared shitless but yes let's move on quickly to the other detail of meal timing okay it's not gonna make or break you but there are three times I do advocate you sort of prioritize meal timing and the first one is gonna be pre-workout okay training fasted while in a deficit probably won't allow you to maximize your performance okay and as per Kursik et al 2017 they state that pre and or post exercise nutritional intervention so carbs and protein or just protein alone may operate as an effective strategy to support increases in strength and improvements in body composition so yes ideally a small little carbohydrate protein rich snack before the gym to maximize your performance not like me training fasted but you know I'm a potato so here we go legs in three two one. Oh my god family you know Stairmaster still to do and here we go so 20 minutes here we go in three two one boom there we go 20 minutes bish bash bosh finito okay that was a lot more difficult than normal but anyway we still got it done now you're probably asking what should you be eating post-workout is it important or not but firstly attempt number 10 oh 10 attempts that's not bad now but yes, we are going for the staple. I was gonna go for the oat cake, but I am actually feeling pretty ill after that workout. So we're gonna go for something far less voluminous, probably have like the oat cake later. But yeah, when it comes to post-workout nutrition, the whole anabolic window myth has been debunked as per Aragon and Schoenfeld 2013, who state that the whole hypothesis is based largely on the presupposition that training is carried out in a fasted state. In which case, literally like me, you wanna get home and just eat some amino acids. But based on the fact that MPS lasts roughly four hours in the context of a pre-workout meal with adequate protein, immediate post-exercise protein dosing for the aim of mitigating catabolism seems redundant as technically the next protein-rich meal, whether it occurs like immediately or one to two hours post-exercise, is likely sufficient for maximizing recovery and anabolism. Sort of makes sense. You pretty much have this like four hour window to get amino acids. So prioritize pre-workout nutrition and this is less important. But yeah, if you're hungry after exercise and you want to eat something straight away, it's definitely not going to harm you, okay? If anything, is going to benefit you so that is going to be that the next meal timing is going to involve a trip to the motherland at this stage numero quattro aldi <laughs> deja vu so yeah another time you might want to prioritize a meal you may not have thought of it is before bed okay not only from a dietary adherence standpoint just so you don't blow your macros because you're so hungry before bed but there is also science out there by Tromelin and van loon 2016 who have shown that pre-sleep protein ingestion represents an effective dietary strategy to improve overnight mps thereby improving the skeletal muscle adaptive response to exercise training so yeah a light meal before bed is super super advantageous you know i'm a huge advocate of that especially when it comes to ice cream there you go you see that high protein perfect for stimulating mps and how can you not forget my love for cereal and there is actually logic behind this choice so in terms of golden puffs you know these are what i'm addicted to at the moment well oh, god Damn it, but yes, there is also science to suggest that adding carbs to your pre-bed meal can be highly advantageous. As per Porter and Horn 1981, who showed that a carb-rich meal in the one to four hour period before bed has shown to actually improve sleep quality, okay? So protein and carbs, ideally, you wanna keep fats a little bit low. But yeah, if you want me to literally do like a whole series on all of these components in themselves, then that can definitely be done. But yeah, overall, this is the fundamental fat loss diet for you set up, okay? We had calories, protein, fats, carbs, meal frequency, and meal timing. And if you want the types of foods that you should be eating along with diet hacks, I do actually have a video on that already. That will be linked down below. But yeah, that is the end of the video. Hope you all have a good day. See you all in the next video. Boop!